What's good y'all, it's time for another video and this time we are going to talk about artifacts. Same as with the gear cleansing guide, we're going to kind of make a artifacts 101 and the special part is we're going to go over only the important artifacts and everything we're not going to go over. You can either completely sell all copies or just to be 100% safe, even though I doubt it, 100% safe for the future, you can keep a single copy of them. So yeah, anything we're not going to talk about isn't going to be of importance. So let's get straight into it and start with the crowd favorite, the Mabucket. So yeah, um, Mabucket was one of those that brought this artifact to the front because it might, does, it might not look as impressive, but this 8% attack increase right here is actually an attack increase that gets applied at the end. So what happens is your character gets the stats from their base stats, from their gear, from the Lord bonus, from the artifact. And then at the end of all those numbers, that, the attacks that then gets multiplied by 8% and then all the way up to 16% at the maxed out Keen Wisdom. And the general rule for Keen Wisdom is you want two copies. Two copies at either 22 or 25. So why 22 or 25? Because at 22 you get a 16% attack increase. And at 25 you get a 16% attack increase but an ally can be in within two tiles. So there might be scenarios, for example in Arena, where your uh, Dolores isn't directly as close, like directly next to your ally. So you might want a 25, but in general, a 22 Keen Wisdom gives obviously the highest possible attack bonus. So for example, in Gapos, that's absolutely no problem, or be it gear rate one or, I mean, you get what I mean. All right, uh, the rest of those, you can, if you're just starting out, you can keep all the purple artifacts. They aren't bad, but those over here are pretty much just weakened versions of future artifacts. So there's no need to invest into them. There's no need to upgrade them. There's no need to do whatever you, with them. So you, you're going to replace them in the future. But if you're just starting out, those are good ones. But at the end of the day, the only one that's really worth it is Keen Wisdom. So the best part about Keen Wisdom is it's like, at least at the moment still, the best in slot artifact for Constance and Dolores. So the two inspiration buffers or the two most used inspiration buffers. Obviously there's also Skulf and Nunea, but no one really uses them <laughs> unless you're forced to do so. And and then in general, with uh, so the damage formula of this game is that you take your attack and from that attack, you subtract the enemy defense, which obviously gives you then a smaller number. And this small number is then what your base damage is. And that gets multiplied by other damage multipliers your character has, be it skill damage, uh, crit damage, and all, and then vulnerability and all that stuff. So if you take a closer look, you're going to realize the higher your attack, the higher your base damage. And the higher your base damage, obviously the more effective multipliers are, which is why attack is considered in this game the god stat. It is, it is the stat you want and... So that's also the reason why, obviously pre-patched, gear rate one was super difficult because what a lot of people didn't realize was that the enemy defense was so high that if you didn't have higher attack than the enemy defense, like if your attack was lower than enemy defense, you did no damage at all. So what happens is if your attack is lower than the enemy defense, your attack gets cut down to 5%. So you're just doing 5% of what you're actually supposed to do, which is obviously nothing at all and not enough to clear the stage. So yeah, enough of that, enough of the damage from here, let's continue. We have a couple new artifacts since the last arena patch. For example, Sombane Rosary. And uh, some of you might realize, hmm, an attack buff for tanks? And we have Dolores and Constance? Maybe they just made them for them. And that's that's also the interesting part. I can't I can't quite yet give you a judgment about the two because there's two. Obviously, one technically for Dolores, giving 8% attack bonus in Ultimate, which is the only a place where you need the attack bonus. And then obviously here reducing max HP and giving 8% attack bonus. So the interesting part about those is I don't have confirmation on how they scale. So I was able to get my hands on, at least for the moment, just one of those Soulbane Rosaries. And as you can see, it's, it's an 8% attack increase. So the same as uh, Keen Wisdom would be. But at, le uh, at, level, uh, at level 2, 
so not, not level 2 but level 13 if you enhance it you're actually going to get a 10% one so let's say for example it's going to be 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 then it's going to be 2% higher than the Keen Wisdom as well as being a legendary artifact compared to an epic one which would lead to a rather big increase in attack so there's there's two things to this number one it is it is rare it is it is new you need to farm for it there's a lot of legendary artifacts your chance is relatively low to get it you can obviously com uh, compensate for that once per week with the legendary artifact uh, freebie material so you, you pay like 300 arena coins and then you can simulate the fact that you had let's say another soul brain rosary so uh but i don't even think the difference is going to be as significant. So you might as well upgrade the cheaper, easier to get Keen Wisdom or just keep your Keen Wisdom until we have it confirmed how big of a difference a Soulbane Rosary makes compared to a Keen Wisdom. So yeah, that's that's my verdict on Soulbane, uh, uh, Soulbane Rosary and Oneric Band, is that the name? Oneric Band for the moment. Now, uh, before that one, we also had another patch where we got a couple new artifacts. I already talked about them briefly, but the Nephrite Folio, Chalice of Youth, Crest of Thunder and Prey Slayer are just slimmed down, watered down versions of their big brother mythic artifacts. So for example, Prey Slayer is, is a Scarlet Hunt, but weaker. And at the end of the day, it's pretty much 50% effectiveness. So what you want to do with those, you can keep them for the moment. You can use them, but as soon as you get the uh, as you get the mythic counterpart, you can just replace them. So there's also no need to invest into them because they are going to become useless. They are going to become useless just by you getting the mythic equivalent. So enough about those four. Pin of Precision is one of those you can sell, but you could also keep around six of them so obviously one and then five to get it to max enhancements to use it on a hero like Laura but in general pin of precision feels special but doesn't really have a purpose so honestly you can sell it Ionian time you can sell tumultuous horn so there's two use cases for tumultuous horn at the moment use case number one you're playing gear 2 and you're not using Laurel for Rage Regions, so for example using a Vierna and a Dolores combo to take care of the waves in Gear 2, then you need a Tumultuous Horn on your Dolores, so your Dolores Rage Region can keep up with, uh, basically that your Dolores can regenerate Rage fast enough to use the ultimate in time for your Vierna to one-shot the waves. So you need a single copy of Tumultuous Horn. And now the second most interesting usage that has been discovered, uh, let's, let's say a month ago, and that is using a layer. So what you're doing is you're using a max skilled layer. So her ultimate is at max level, which is going to be a thousand rage cap. And she starts at 500 rage. And what a 25 tumultuous horn does is give 50% initial rage. So it allows you to instantly place layer, instantly use her ultimate, and then either take her out again, wait for her, bring her back in, use her ultimate, or you bring her in, activate her ultimate, wait it out, activate her ultimate again, and then take out. So Tumultuous Horn is really, really good in <laughs> high, high, high level, um, high, high, high level guild boss strats. Besides that, there isn't really a major usage, unless you consider Arena. So one of the approaches typically seen in anti-air Arena, at least at the higher levels, is giving your Dolores a Tumultuous Horn. So you can boost your e drill faster, which buys you a couple of seconds, which then obviously takes uh, health away from the enemy tower. Solar Embrace, sell. Watch God's Wisdom, sell. Watch God's Fortune, sell. Watch God's Disguise, sell. Watch God's Unity, sell. What's God's Ambition? Is rumored to be good, is supposed to work. I went through the effort, I brought it to 25, I equipped it on, on a Deimos, I went in and I got bad results. So honestly, if you want to, you can keep six copies, but at least for the moment, it really doesn't have a purpose. It sounds special, it sounds nice, but it doesn't It doesn't perform. North Storm, sell. North's Glory, sell. North's Judgment, sell. North's Will is another one you can keep. So there's primarily, obviously everyone has Oleg, and Oleg is considered the best epic tank in the entire game, and in general, 
the tank that most players use, especially because everyone gets him on level 40 in Void Drift or now uh, is somewhere in campaign when you unlock Void Drift. So what this says is when the shield disappears, restores 10% HP. And we all know Oleg has a passive that gives him a shield every couple of seconds. I believe it's every 10. And then also you have a Northern Lord. So what people do and what you're supposed to do is run a Northern Lord that gives a shield every couple of seconds. Run an Oleg that gives himself a shield a couple of seconds. And then Oleg gets self-sustain. And the place where that is most useful is at the moment AMR. So what that allows you to do is use, for example, a Q, Xelas, Hex, whoever you want on the platform, because there's only one platform going from AMR 13 or higher. And then you can use a damage dealer on the platform because Oleg is going to be able to self-sustain through the use of Norse Will. So every time the boss breaks his shield, he will restore HP and then he is going to have a shield up, it's going to tank some damage. I mean, you get what I mean. So keep at least one Norse Will. I haven't yet found any content where you need to go higher than one copy, but you can start stacking up copies because honestly Oleg is that good and at the end of the day, there might be content where you would want it 25 North will, but nothing yet. Northorn, sell. Nightmare Samsara. So there's two, nah, let's, let's say three. Three use cases for Nightmare Samsara. Nightmare Samsara. Use case number one, Pyrus. So for a Pyrus to actually work properly or work at its highest efficiency, what you want to do is use his ultimate twice during a single Zilla to ultimate. And for that to work, you not only need them in a speed set, so with a lot of attack speed and then a lot of rage region, you also need a Nightmare Samsara. The higher the level, the better and the smoother it works. So you're going to keep those Nightmare Samsaras, you're going to upgrade them. And this is also the first artifact where you would even want two copies at 25, even two copies at 25, because there's another usage. Gear rate 1. Gear Rate 1 isn't as much about damage as it is also about crowd control and stopping the enemies from hurting your wall and buying yourself time so your mages can ultimate again. And one of the major characters for that, besides Boreas that is fucking broken, is Mary. And this artifact is perfect for Mary because as you can see uh, it restores 5 up to 7.5% rage for every 5 attacks. So what you're going to do is you're going to equip a 25 Nightmare Samsara on your Mary and she's going to be able to restore rage very very fast even if you don't have a rage region unit on for example the left side or right side wherever you place her. And then it also only gets enhanced if you do run a rage region unit alongside her. And then there's the th third case, which is Lysir. So, um, honestly, instead of running Lysir for damage, the best way to actually run your Lysir is using the same as with the Pyrus, a uh, attack speed, rage region, and Nightmare Samsara build to allow him to anti-heal every heal wave. So what a Nightmare Samsara does, especially if you then combine it with the Loris, allow him to anti-heal every wave and then completely shutting down enemy healing, which obviously brings down the damage requirements a lot because obviously the enemies aren't getting healed. Next ones. So Broken Nightmare, honestly, it is quite nice and it might work in the earlier to mid game to even into the late game so you can keep one or two copies but you shouldn't focus on it too much it is not as impressive but at the end of the day it's an attack increase so it's fine nightmare serpent you can sell nightmare shadow you can sell soul binding crystal you can sell sacred amber you can sell shadow gaze kind of the same scenario as with uh, broken nightmare but obviously different trigger condition you can keep, but there's no real need to keep because you might as well just use a Keen Wisdom. Heart of Thorns, sell. Rage Chain, sell. White Tower Trinket. Now, what a White Tower Trinket is, is basically a legendary Keen Wisdom with some additional attack speed if there are no adjacent allies, also starting out sorry, at a higher attack percentage. So yeah, White Tower Trinket, keep. And even upgrade, it to, even upgrade it to 25 if you want to, especially if you're unlucky with Tier of Twilight. We'll get to that later. So yeah, that one is definitely a keeper. You can upgrade it, but you don't need more than one copy. Radiant Lantern. 
Uh, Radiant Lantern is something you equip on like your AOE healers. So for example, Elowin, Leia, Midan. Yeah, those those three mainly. Uh, so yeah, you can you can just keep a copy, and you do, but you don't need to upgrade it in general as a tip. There is no need to upgrade healer artifacts. Every content in the game is possible to be played with healer artifacts at maximum plus 10. And that's it. Idris Gaze, one of the strongest legendary artifacts in the entire game with a ridiculous up to 40% defense ignore at I believe 25% chance. Don't quote me on that one. So for Idris Gaze, what you want to do is two times at 25. It is, it is going to be super, super useful in a lot of content. It is going to be absolutely annihilating gear rate 2 on a hard set. It is going to absolutely annihilate gear rate 3 on an, obviously, Idre. Then on a hard set, it is going to work even on gate boss. There it is less pronounced. But in general, two copies, both at 25 and you're set. So don't sell your Idre's cases. Oh yeah, and it, uh, also... Every item or every artifact I'm talking about out of the legendary category that I'm telling you to 25, there's no need to just farm it. You can also over the weeks just buy those uh, those copies, like the ones I told, uh, talked about in the arena shop that uh, replace a legendary artifact. Let's just have a quick look just so we're all on the same page. So once we go in here, legendary artifact essence. So that replaces any legendary artifact you want, costs 300 coins. Obviously, you should only buy it when you have some coins lying around because at the end of the day, summons and a skill crystal is still more valuable. All right, back to the drawing board, back into artifact talks. Where do, where did we stop? Okay, Voros Wave, sell. Rex's Wow is fine. Could also work on an Oleg. But there is no real need for it. If you want to keep a copy, but that's that's about it. Spellcaster's Echo. Now it becomes kinda interesting. The only place where you use a spellcaster's echo is a twin fiend. So if you expect to ever get a twin fiend, keep up to six copies of it, and as soon as you get a twin fiend, 25 it. Because what this can do is if you have a twin fiend, and if you have an A3 Zilla 2. A3 Zilla to giving her 10 seconds long alteration. You can ult three times, three times with the Twin Fiend in a single Zilla to ultimate. So yeah, uh, ridiculous numbers. Lucky Legacy. Lucky Legacy, for the moment it isn't needed. There is no content where you really need to rely... There is no content where you need to rely on cost RNG, but there might be some in the future and you never know. And also, if you're running a Delon, Navi, Cyrene, you might as well give him this artifact with an increased chance to double the amount. I mean, it's fancy, it's not going to be special, but you should keep six copies of it just in case. Ninja's Mercy, again, one of those you can keep one copy of, you can just slap it on your healer. Doesn't really matter what kind of healer. Taunting Gaze, Taunting Gaze can be sold. Definitely. Definitely can also be sold and Slayer's Malice is quite alright as an early game damage dealing artifact. So yeah, obviously put it on someone that either gets healed or has self healing like A5 Wrath and then you're going to succeed. Alright, on to the mythic artifacts. Uh, so we already talked about Soulbane Rosary and Oneric Band. Now we have Astral Obelisk and Golden Scarab which is Kind of the same thing, but just mythic rarity. Again, I believe it is mainly made for Constances and Doloreses. But I also have a Golden Scarab lying around. I believe we got one. Because I get lucky enough. I, I found a couple artifacts trying to prepare a bit. So where do we go? There we go. So this Golden Scarab here, as you can see, let me, let me move myself out of the way. Once you go from 10 to 13, the attack bonus doesn't actually increase. The only thing that increases is the rage region. So it is it is kind of the same case as with the legendary ones, but I kind of doubt that it is more efficient. So yes, you get you get way more base stats, but at the end of the day, this is a multiplayer that gets applied at the very, very end, and it is three times as much as this multiplayer over here. 
So um, unless we actually know the complete math values and what is higher, don't sell them, just keep them. Uh, we gotta see, we gotta see what happens, but I don't think, at least for the moment, that there are going to be bis for so like best in slot for Constance or Dolores. So yeah, Golden Scarab, Astro Obelix, just keep them. Reaper's Emblem, you're going to keep a single copy of it. If you want to, you can keep up to six, or you can sell the rest. Just keep a single copy. Bloodborne Signet, Bloodborne Signet is one of those that isn't the top tier for if you're talking marksman. But it's also not bad. So the top tier would obviously be Spirit Siphon, which is one of those where you would want either one copy at 25, but preferably two. And because you're using a lot of marksmen and Spirit Siphon is con is pretty rare, you're going to find a couple Bloodborne Signets on the side. So what I've done or what others should also do, especially for example for Arena, Bloodborne Signet has a slightly better usage than Spirit Siphon, but I just show you what I've done. So, for example, we have two 25 Spirit Siphons and then I've just upgraded a single Bloodborne Signet and that's also my recommendation. Just just keep enough Bloodborne Signets to make one and then you could sell the rest and for Spirit Siphon, then let's already talk about it, you preferably want two, both of them at 25. Alright, Elysian Epitaph. <laughs> There's interesting a bit of a misconception about it. I think it stems from a buckets website, but I'm not entirely sure because it says increases healing effect in brackets ST and ST stands for single target. So this artifact has no place on heroes like Elowin. So preferably you just slap it on your vortex and then it's going to increase the healing effect by 13%. Uh, I can't do math, 12 but that is another one, you just keep a single copy. As with all the other healing artifacts, you only really want to keep a single copy, Elysian Epitaph, and you're good. Tuning Crystal. Tuning Crystal, at least for the general player, the non-endgame, the non-min-max focused player, Tuning Crystal is absolutely uninteresting. But you should keep one copy in case you pull a Garn, Torador, or even Cyrus, because it might be useful in Codex Guild Boss, but there is no uh, in Cyrus, in Mortal Codex Cyrus. Uh, so you, you can keep a copy of that one. Rantier. Rantier is one of those best in slots Guild Boss artifacts. So for Rantier, easy, six copies, upgrade to 25, done. Lunacy Visor. Lunacy Visor has found a lot of popularity considering the fact that you can cheese uh, certain void stages with it. It it was it was a staple in arena when it came to actually uh, blocking units in front of the spawn. Now it's a bit harder, but it's still viable and also very very useful if you're using a Cerberus Aatrox approach when it comes to AOE arena. So keep at least one lunacy visor, and then every every other you get, you can either keep two uh, two separate ones. But I, what I did is just upgrade one to twenty five, and then. Be done with it. Obviously, you don't necessarily need it. And 25, the multipliers don't really get higher. The only thing that changes is the restore HP and the block stays the same. Tom of Horror, honestly, there's only a single scenario in which this is useful, and that is increasing attack speed of Mary in Gate Boss, which is. <laughs> You might as well just give her 400 attack speed and have her apply the debuff constantly. You don't need the extra 30 attack speed. So Tom of Horror, you can easily sell. Now, obviously there's exceptions to every rule. Euphoric Orb. Euphoric Orb is the only healer artifact you actually want to upgrade. And that is preferably bringing up to 25. And what changes is not only does the attack speed change from 30 to 40, but it also increases how long it lasts up to 40 seconds. So yeah, Euphoric Orb is your best pick when it comes to usefulness on any healer because it actually helps your units do more damage. So especially for a hollow in-gate boss, this is the premier choice. Graveyard Opus. Zealous exclusive, uh, Zealous's exclusive artifact. Honestly, it's an exclusive artifact. It makes Zealous, it makes him better. It gives him some more usefulness. So you shouldn't sell the copies, but also there's no need even if you have multiple copies to instantly max it out because because uh, the only increase is up to 45%. So it isn't even that big of a step up in reducing enemy ceiling. Goddess Grace. 
got his grace. The only reason to keep this one is for future defenders. So there's going to be three candidates. Azor, who's kind of trash. Garn, who's way too fucking rare. But on, uh, on Garn, this is going to be pretty, pretty nice. So you want to keep six copies. And then Trusk. I already tr talked about Trusk a couple of times. So Trusk is going to be a lizard scale... Lizard Scalekin, I believe their name is, and he's going to be kind of a chunky boy, and he'll have like lightning spikes. At the end of the day, he's a he's kind of he's he's a counter a countering defense based defender. So just keep six goddess graces, be on the safe side, uh, safe side, and no need to regret anything. And then we got Bloodlust Phylactery. So Bloodlust Phylactery is pretty much the premier artifact choice when it comes to tanks that actually do damage. Obviously, there's a couple of trash ones like Aurum and Azor, but there's also really good ones like Cyrus, technically Torador, and then obviously Garn. So just keep six of them. It is quite rare. Just keep them. There's no need to sell them because you're going to regret it anyway as soon as you pull one of those units. Frigid Flame. Frigid Flame is a pretty, pretty strong artifact that after 12 seconds reaches incredibly high multipliers and can do a lot of damage. But there is a caveat to it, and that's the fact that it removes one stack every time the one equipped with Frigid Flame takes damage. And that is ex especially detrimental when it comes to Gate Boss, because we all know the Gate Boss shoots down his Meteors and applies a burn. So the only way you can realistically use Frigid Flame in Gate Boss is if you're using an Elowin or Midan, but preferably Elowin to cleanse. And what you then need to do is cleanse the second time the meteors hit, so your heroes are at full power for the shield, or at least the ones that use Frigid Flame. So if you're thinking about upgrading a guild artifact and you have the choice between Frigid Flame and Realm Tier, just upgrade Realm Tier, it's easier to use. And also Frigid Flame doesn't quite work together with the meta strategy of using Hollow and Laurel when it comes to guild boss. Eye of Sin. Eye of Sin is one of those artifacts that even at higher levels, you don't really feel the impact. So you're going to keep one. You can sell the other copies or you can keep up to six. There isn't really a difference. But also you shouldn't put your focus on upgrading this one. Sharpshooter's Crest. Sharpshooter's Crest is pretty nice. It is basically designed for AOE marksmen. And on every AOE marksman, be it Brienne, Nyx, Pelagios, whoever you're going to give it to, it is going to perform. So what you want to do is keep six copies, but here's the interesting part. You don't necessarily need to upgrade one to 25 because even at 10, there's no content and AOE marksman can't do even with the sharpshooter's crest at 10. So you can keep multiple sharpshooter's crests because there's a lot of AOE marksmen and there might be a stage where you need two or even three of those. So keeping the sharpshooter's crest unupgraded is also perfectly fine. Unfortunate Skull, one of the most unfortunate name changes from Wailing Skull to... Was it Wailing Skull? Ah, Skull of Doom. <laughs> Skull of Doom to Unfortunate Skull. So, um, yeah. So, the biggest problem is it has, it has a huge multiplayer. It has a kind of bad effect, which is going to be taking increased damage, but it is kind of ignorable if you just place a healer next to your mage. The biggest problem with this artifact is it just can't compete to its uh, to its bigger brother, to the artifact of artifacts, the strongest artifact in existence, which is going to be Tear of Twilight. And uh, the keen eye might notice the only thing Tear, uh, Tear of Twilight does is increase attack by 20%. And now if we go back to the beginning of the video, attack percent is just the god's dead. And at the end of the day, Tear of Twilight even at level 1 is just way better 4% higher multipliers, higher base sets than even a normal Keen Wisdom so yeah, Keen, uh, Tear of Twilight is the best artifact on any mages and that is why Unfortunate Skull really isn't as good even though the multiplayer is quite nice so the main reason to use Unfortunate Skull is if you already have a lot of attack on your mage so for example you're already running uh, triple triple attack percent main stat on the right side and you could justify using an unfortunate skull or because tier of twilight is a fucking twat and super rare you can just upgrade an off unfortunate skull alongside of it so you at least for gear rate one have an artifact for both of your mages 
because you preferably want to run only two damage dealers when it comes to gear rate one. Now from another ridiculously OP artifact to the next one and Wailing Skull. Wailing Skull is by far the strongest choice when it comes to fighter artifacts. So a Wailing Skull is pretty much what a Tear of Twilight is for mages, a Wailing Skull is for fighters. Now the interesting part about a Wailing Skull is a Wailing Skull at plus 10 is actually bad. And why is a Wailing Skull at 10 bad if it is the strongest artifact in existence? That is very simple because if you look, if you read through the text, it says dealing damage has a 40% of summoning one shadow guard with 80% of the hero's attributes. So what it does, it, is summon, it summons a guard that attacks enemies using your hero's attributes. So your hero's attack, your hero's attack speed, crit damage, all that good stuff. And there comes the problem. We already talked about attack percent being the god stat. And if you only get 80% of your character's attack, the, the shadow guard you summon isn't going to be as effective. So the rule of thumb for a Wailing Skull is not only want you, do you want it at 25, but you only should really start using it once you have it at 16, which puts the multiplayer at I believe 120%, but at the end of the day, it's just above 100% and that is where Wailing Skull really starts to shine. Now, Tidal Ring is one of the most useless artifacts ever. The only reason you're going to run it is on a uh, Shamir, which is also one of the most useless characters ever. But yeah, uh, honestly, you can sell those. It's kind of free Mithril, even though obviously you've grinded for it. But if you want to keep one, but the biggest problem with this artifact is it does two things pretty lukewarm. Number one, it increases damage by only 10%, which is kind of nothing, for example, compared to Unfortunate Skull. And then it also gives you a 25% chance to do a 50% slow, but it can only be triggered once every four seconds. And at and for example, a lot of people are running it on a Mary, which is, which I find kind of interesting because a Mary obviously already slows with a basic attack. So please don't run Tide Ring on a Mary. And yeah, at the end, and it's just free Mithril. Tia's Bomb, another one of those. Just keep a single copy, sell the rest, keep it at 10, use it on the healer if you want to and be done with it. Bastion Ring. Further, uh, preferably called Olex Wall, but they changed the name to Bastion Ring for whatever reason. The deal with Bastion Ring is it is the best tank artifact when it comes to content where your tank is tanking more than two units or at least two. So if it's a 1v1 situation, Olex Wall or even Rex Wow, depending on the circumstance of your character, is superior or Regal's Crest over here. But best ring is the artifact is best in situations where you're fighting more than one enemy because what it does is increases physical and magical damage reduction by 4% stacking up to four times. So per blocked unit you get more reduction, which is then obviously better if you're blocking more enemies. Best ring, what you want to do is honestly keep like four or five copies. If we if we take a look at uh, <laughs> at my tank artifacts real quick, uh, you can see we have a, we have a lot of bastion rings. We have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine bastion rings. As you can see, I haven't upgraded them yet because the same deal for tank artifact is what also applies to healer artifacts. You don't need to upgrade them. As you can see, I've upgraded the bloodless phylactery because I wanted to play around with Torador, but that's not that important. So yeah, uh, even even at 10, it is totally fine. It does its job perfectly and there is no content yet. Besides maybe Minmax Guild wa was facing the craziest guild in existence, but that's negligible in comparison to the complete game and the whole content. So yeah, let's get back into the forge and finish this up. Bright Root Ring, <laughs> ah, Heaven's Rage. So Heaven's Rage is pretty much in the same spot as Unfortunate Skull, but considering the fact that it is it is crit damage, it is kind of even less important than uh, AOE damage, which is obviously a straight up multiplier. 
but in comparison to Unfortunate Skull, which increases AoE damage, it can be used on someone like a Nocturne, increasing crit damage here again. The only reason you would use this above a tier of Twilight is if you already have a lot and a lot and a lot of attack and you just need a different source of damage, which would then be crit damage. But for Heaven's Rage, keep uh, keep uh, technically six copies, but honestly, you can just sell them and be fine with the Keen Wisdom or even a White Tower Trinket. Bright Root Ring. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Keep a copy, equip it, no need to upgrade it. If you ever want to get fancy later on, you'll always find a bright root ring. It's honestly not that rare. We already talked about Spirit Siphon, which puts us to second to last, Regal Crest. Regal Crest is pretty much the solution for healers that don't use shields, uh, for tanks that don't use shields and they just want more survivability against a single enemy, which is going to be increasing the received healing or it could be used on, for example, a Baron to counteract the negative effect from uh, the Nightmare Faction Lord bonus, which reduces healing. So yeah, uh, Regal Quest, preferably for one, one versus one combat, and again, Bastion Ring for any type of multiple enemy combat. Which brings us to the most popular artifact, and a fun fact about Scarlet Hunt, every player's first Mythic Craft artifact is going to be a Scarlet Hunt. So yeah, uh, now you know you never became lucky in the first place. So uh, obviously the only reason you're going to use the Scarlet Hunt is if you have a bleeder. And the general rule with bleeders, I guess, is either have a Salazar, preferably then at A1 or A3, or have a combination of, for example, Komodo and Lugaru, Komodo, Vladov, Komodo, Adea, Vladov, Sargak, you get what I mean. Basically you need a reliable source of applying bleeds and that's the only place where it is really useful but it does get good multipliers because with bleed and at 25 it gives you 30% increased extra damage which is super useful and if you can make use of it you definitely should. So Scarlet Hunt is also one of those where you could keep at least one copy at 25 or for example if you do actually happen to have a Salazar you're going to find yourself looking at uh, basically two copies of Scarlet Hunt, even though it is getting less and less used because at least the meta at the moment is shifting away from fighters and more to ranged units, which also explains the fact that we're having, as you can see, more Spirit Siphons. So yeah, this concludes Artifacts. I hope this helped you out. And uh, yeah, uh, big Guild Boss guy is in the works. Uh, if you appreciated it, enjoyed this one, uh, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment if I missed something and uh, yeah, appreciate it.